Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the King Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Tristan. I'm at with Luis. It's been a while, dude. How you been? Doing okay. Thank you. Uh, how are you? Doing well. Good. Doing well. So uh, we'll have uh, quite a few interesting stories today, actually. So EA is reportedly going to revive an old IP, which we'll find out later today as we're recording this, actually. Or actually, no, next month. Actually, a month from today. I I got confused. I saw the 22nd and then I remembered, no, it, it's in July. We'll be getting something mm-hmm. actually. Um, it sounds really interesting. And then George R. R. Martin has said uh, a little bit about Elden Ring. He's actually finished his work years ago, apparently, as that game's coming out in January. And we'll talk about Elden Ring. It got shown off a gameplay trailer at Summer Game Fest. And we also got the release date for January. And so we'll kind of give our hopes for it, kind of talk about uh, a little bit about that. Uh, so let's get right into uh EA's reviving an old IP. I have an article from VGC from Andy Robinson. Uh, it's actually first reported by James uh, Games Beats uh, Jeff Grubb uh, on a live stream. He was talking about how EA is going to announce uh, something interesting uh, on July 22nd at an event. So he's they're basically going to revive an old IP with EA Motive um, at that studio. And then Jamatsu picked it up and then they corroborated his story, but also they thought out said it's gonna be a dead space um reimagining of the series rather than a normal sequel uh luis what do you think about that are you a big dead space guy i am for the first one and the second one i never played the third one because of the bad rap that it has um with all the i guess what was the microtransactions that he had at the, at the time or i don't remember exactly what it was that made everyone hate it and i remember my, my friends hating it and i just never touched the third one but i do love the first one and the second one i even still play it from time to time i love the atmosphere and i don't know i mean when it comes to horror games i would very much rather have like an action horror game like dead space or resident evil I'll, till six like four or five and six than um like an amnesia kind of horror game where you can't do anything i'd rather be able to you know defend myself and whatnot and i think that's that and i think that's something that dead space does very well um and it's very atmospheric and i, and I really like it the first one and the second one the second one i like more um and I never, I never did touch the third one i don't know if this is going to be like a remake or a reboot and i don't know it seems kind of risky to me because that space is great i mean the first one and the second one uh just like it is i don't know what you think about that yeah i i, I love the first two dead space games the third one's not awful it's just like they kind of leaned a little bit too into action um for most people's tastes i think um hmm. it's actually a pretty good co-op game like if you had a friend to play with it was actually pretty good as the game itself it was just kind of a generic third person shooter um but uh it was it had some interesting ideas and stuff like that. It just didn't kind of hit the heights of the the second game and, and so in the first game, I agree. Like the second game is easily the best one though, and the first one is still great. Um, I really liked that franchise though. I I've been hoping for them to revive it for a while now. I think it's a missed opportunity the fact that they haven't tried to do something with the IP. Um, but I think this makes a lot of sense. Again, we don't fully know, and I don't know like where they got that info about it being dead space at jamatsu you know totally reputable outlet and stuff like that um but uh i would be super interested if it's dead space i really hope it is if it's something else that's that's cool and stuff like that i can't really think of any dead ips at ea that i would be stoked to see unless it was dead space but uh I think it's totally possible. You know, it's coming from reputable uh, sources uh, with Jeff Grubb and then Jamatsu and some other outlets have picked it up too, like like what we're reading from VGC. So I think it's plausible. Um, I think, you know, we're a month away at July 22nd uh, the, the, at EA's event. We'll be able to see it. So fingers crossed. I think it'd be super cool. But um I don't know how it would ring as in a reimagining and what direction they'll take with it. Um, I think what they mean is they'll probably like, it sounds like a reboot almost um, that they're doing. Um, at least that's my, that's my take on it. Mm, I didn't know that it was co-op. So I probably just had to revisit it because of that, but I, it was interesting that there was something else going on with it. Um, 
Yeah, it's not, been so long, I can't remember. Not the story and not uh, the gameplay itself, but I think it, there were microtransactions in it, like very heavily at, at the beginning, at least. Yeah, I don't remember. And, it, it's been so long at this and, point. And that drove me away. Like, it usually drives me away from so many games. Like, I'm just playing right now uh, Shadow of War for the first time. Mm, and I game. stayed. Yeah, and I stayed away from it because of the microtransactions, and then they took them off, and I never revisited it until just recently, a few weeks ago. I'm almost done with it, and it's a, and it's an amazing game. I, I mean, I can't imagine what it was like with the microtransactions, uh, but I usually just stay away from games when they do that. Yeah, I didn't think the microtransactions in that game were too bad. Like, for what you're talking about, it got really bad at, like, late game, because then it's, like, it became such a huge grind that it kind of mm -hmm. incentivized you to be like, hey, you could just spend your money and get through the grind, <laughs> you know? And it's like, oh, come on. Why, why are we doing this? Especially, like, microtransactions, if it's cosmetic, it's fine. And if it's not, then you have to walk a very fine line. And in single-player games, it's like, oh, come on. Like, I get it, because single-player games, it's, like, maybe a little bit harder to, to make money off of. Uh, typically but like come on it's just like just throw in some cosmetic stuff but don't make it tied to progression and stuff like that it's yeah and it, and it feels and it feels like they just added the online feature to make the micro from microtransactions work mm -hmm. like yeah. there is no there's, there's no real reason in shadow of mortar shadow of war to have like an online community or alternate dimensions with other players like they do in dark souls for instance but only used to other microtransactions. I mean, like right now, there aren't any microtransactions, and that's great. And it's not too grindy. Uh, right now, I'm sitting in like 70,000, whatever they're called, tokens or whatever. And it's just fine. I mean, I'm just going around and getting them from different um, sources. And I, I haven't had any issues with that, and I haven't run out of them, and I'm almost done with the game. Mm, nice. Um, well, yeah, it's a, it it's a really good game, me. and uh, I would love to see another one of those, or at least something kind of similar, you know? It was it's like uh I don't know, sort of like Assassin's Creed, but like a little bit more like Bat Batman, Batman Arkham in a way, but more brutal. It was like it was super cool. Yeah, it's a very good game. I like it. I have my issues with the story in the second one. I feel like some things don't necessarily match with the first one, but that's another thing for another day, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Um so let's get to our next story though. Uh so I have a article pulled up from Eurogamer by Emma Kent. Uh, so George R. R. Martin has revealed that he finished writing Elden Ring years ago. Um, he was actually visiting uh, Northwestern University's Medill uh, School of Journalism, where she actually uh, went to school at and got an honorary doctorate. He spoke to a local local news station, WWTW, about um, his career and whatnot and all the stuff he's done. And he also, of course, talked about Elden Ring, which is his you know, latest big project. And he said he kind of helped build the world and the characters, stuff we know. Um, and he got updates about the artwork. He got to see stuff along the way as they were developing the game. But yeah, it turns out he finished it years ago. And like, I figured he must have finished it a good while ago um, because the game re releasing in January, so about six or so months now. But I still was a little surprised by how, like how apparently how he finished it like that long ago, um, which I guess in ways makes sense. But knowing how and slow he is uh, with, uh, you know, uh, Game of Thrones, the books and stuff like that. People were waiting for the for two more books. It is a little surprising with his uh, speed, but hey, at least he finished it. What do you think, Luis? That I, that, that I should explain why he's taking so long with the books, right? Because yeah. the, it wasn't just Elden Ring. It was also the other um, prologue book, the Night of the Seven Kingdoms, whatever it's called, that he was writing in between. And I like, I mean, I like Martin to a certain degree. It's an okay fantasy writer for me. In my book, I still like Rodfus better when it comes to fantasy. Um, but I guess it makes sense that, I mean, when did the original you know, Dark Souls came out? 2012? 13? I think sooner than that. Because I think Demon Souls was uh, 2009. And then the first Dark Souls was 2011. Yeah, 2011. 2011. I just looked it up. Yeah. So 10 years. I mean, 10 years in if it's actually a sequel that like he's saying it is like he's a sequel of the original Dark Souls, then he had something to work with. And I guess that makes it mm, logical that he would be done in a, in a small number of years or, or a small time frame, as opposed to be oh, a very long time like he's with, with, with his books. 
with uh, the issue with the books, I think is that they're very hype at this point, and I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to end them if I was him, and I think that's the problem with that. Um, but uh, it's not surprising to me at all that he he's been done for a long time. What it what it is surprising for me uh, when reading this is that I didn't know that Elden Ring was going to be a direct um, sequel to the to the original Dark Souls. That I caught that. me too. I was mm -hmm. like that. I wasn't like. I know he like was a part of writing the game and stuff like that, but even I was like, even when I read that, I was like, that can't be true. Like it, based on the way they've talked about it, it seemed and him building the world and all this stuff and building the and Miyazaki even said he's helping build the lore. I'm like, well, if it's a sequel to Dark Souls, isn't the lore already there? Unless they're expanding on it, but the, I don't know the way Miyazaki's always talked about it, it sounds like it's a brand new original thing. But then George is like, oh no, it's a sequel, and I'm like. I guess there's certain things we've seen in the game and the trailers that kind of somewhat seem a little bit similar in terms of imagery and style as Dark Souls, but there's some stuff that's completely left field and completely different. So I don't know. Do you think that maybe he doesn't totally grasp what the Soul series is? Maybe that's that. That was my takeaway. I was like, maybe well, he's just like, maybe he misspoke, or maybe he's like, you know. Um, uninformed you know or whatever i think maybe he he didn't quite mean that i don't think yeah i don't know if he plays video games uh i'll be surprised if he does uh, maybe he's just confused with uh with the whole um, souls thing and um yeah i don't know i mean it sounds it seems weird that, that, that it's a direct sequel um one because of, of the time frame or it's been over well 10 years now that it's that it came out the original one then it's been Dark Souls 2 and 3. And then um, the fact that it has two endings, like you can do either one, uh, it's it's always hard to me to determine how they're going to do sequels like that. Like It's not impossible because The Witcher does that. When you have a Witcher 2 save game, it reads into The Witcher 3 and that changes the story to a certain extent. Um, but I used to know how they would, actually do this uh this time well usually when they do like a multiple ending thing but then they do another one it's like there's one ending that's like canon and the rest yeah. aren't you know <laughs> so i i would assume that's, that but yeah, it's but interesting that it's that that the purpose of having multiple endings though oh, yeah for me. but it's interesting that they've talked about like how it's going to be into like they want to expand elden ring into other forms of media like potentially like tv or movies or comics or you know whatever they end up doing um which, you know, I think that would be super cool, but I think it's super interesting that this is the one that they want to expand on. Like, there's been unofficial Bloodborne comics, and there's a specific run of Bloodborne comics that are super popular, but not, there's never been anything official. Um, I know Dark Souls has heavily inspired different things, and it's been inspired by different things, but, mm -hmm. like, there was never anything, like, directly in another medium. So I think what they're building with Elden Ring, especially with this collaboration with George R. R. Martin, I think they're trying to establish something like the next big from software franchise i think now that they basically they because they did say dark that they were done with dark souls which is why i also don't believe george R. R. Martin saying this is a direct sequel because mm -hmm. miyazaki's even said no dark souls is done we're, we're moving on from that um <laughs> and then they've you know they've established new ips of sekiro and bloodborne and now elden ring i wonder if this is going to be essentially like a, a souls like uh franchise like if they're just gonna be like all right elden ring 2 elden ring 3 whatever and maybe do a trilogy of it like they did with dark souls um or expand upon something else because they went from demon souls to dark souls so i don't know if they'll um do anything like that in terms of like uh spin-offs or sequels or whatever I think it makes more sense to have Martin involved if they're uh, going to do like an expanded thing, like series or movies or whatever. And uh, uh, to me, that's a more compelling reason to have Martin involved because he, I mean, he is very good at, at world building. I'm not going to deny that. And looking at the trailer, and I'm looking at it right now again, I'm getting a feeling of a Dark Souls mix with Breath of the Wild. I don't know if you got that too. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Especially just since it is an open world game too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's going to be a little bit different, but the mechanics seems to be essentially the Dark Souls, well, a Souls game, you know? like Yeah. Um, now, what I like to point out about the interview with Martin, and I think that's the biggest point, and like, it's being overlooked, it's that he indicated these games 
are like movies and I, I like that i like that because i've been saying that for for a number of years and i know i'm not the, i'm not the only one uh but i do consider video games to be on par with movies and it, they're even more complex to a certain degree because, because you have to make them well playable more like a movie so i think this is going to i mean call me optimistic but i think this is going to be um a precedent for games actually being considered art, um, an art form like movies are. Yeah, so it, it's be. good when you have like people like George R. R. Martin who are mm-hmm. very much in the public eye, you know, like with Game of Thrones, uh, especially the HBO series, you know, skyrocketing the books, you know, and people are like, oh, there's these books too and stuff like that. And now he's like, everyone knows his name. Him being like, oh, video games are like, are like movies, you know, and, comp- and doing that comparison. I think it, it definitely helps with like the image of video games, especially since it's in the mainstream, but there's still like some pushback from non gamers mm-hmm. about video games as art. Not only non gamers, uh, it's I think it's like a generational thing because yeah. uh, my, my mom, for instance, I mean, everybody around my age and younger know this one. Uh, if I'm talking to my mom or one of my family members that are older about the games that I'm playing. And they don't always seem to grasp just how much they've evolved from, you know, from Nintendo 64 for um, yeah. from um, Mario 64 and the, the Legend of Zelda kind of time, which was already like a cinematic experience at the time. Um, yeah, you know, my, my mom is one of those that I would call every console a Nintendo, you know. Yeah. So I think it's a generational thing. Like people yeah, don't that's true. grasp that they can be art. But that also happened before with comics, and that, I mean, you know, it's always yeah, going to be around. It's kind of how it goes with like a, a newer form of entertainment because video games are still like relatively newer, you know, especially yeah. like the the level that it's at now. You know, it's like I think there's definitely people who are still adjusting, and mm-hmm. clearly people are still, um, but people are acclimating to it though. Because with George R. R. Martin saying that, you know, he's like he's up there in age, you know, he's in his seventies, but the fact that he sees this and he goes no like i get it you know like even if Mm -hmm. i don't know if he's playing games or whatever but at least he regardless of playing games he at least sees it and goes i get it you know Mm -hmm. exactly yes 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 you get me but uh let's get right into elden ring that was you know that's the topic of the show um but before we get into that though just for like listeners who don't know but uh Luis, what's your like what's your history with um from software games you know you're a big fan of the uh, souls like games and all that stuff i am a big fan <laughs> uh but i am falling short on the actual playing them um I bought all three Dark Souls a number of years ago. I think when the, when the original, oh, I'm sorry, when the Dark Souls 3 came out, uh, they all went on sale for a while, like in a package. And I think I bought the, the entire thing on Steam, but I didn't have a computer to play it on. And uh, well, at the time, and then I built my computer, it must have been November. Yeah, November last year. Just in time, by the way, uh, before the whole ship fiasco and, and the charges and, and all that stuff. Um, and by the time I had played the original Dark Souls 1 on this laptop that I'm using for um, for the podcast here, and it ran just fine. I had a problem with, what is it, Blight Town, like everybody does. <laughs> um, but it wasn't horrible. And I, so far, I beat the first one blind without uh, going into any, any guides or anything like that. And then I beat it with a guy because I wanted to do everything and I noticed how much just I, uh, I missed and how true it is that you have to actually go online to play the game. And that's part of the experience of playing the game. I, I like that. Um, but I also liked playing it blind and playing the first Dark Souls game to me. I, I don't think it's going to be an experience that I'll be able to replicate very easily. I think it's a very unique thing to do uh, the first time, the first time around. Mm-hmm. Like when you play it, more times you start noticing flaws or you know how easy the game actually can be when you're not a noob when you actually get good and then i started playing dark souls 2 on this pc that i built and i got stuck in a very frustrating part and when because i started playing shadow war i had not continued with dark souls 2 i'm just going to restart at this point and that's pretty much where i'm at i do have dark souls 3 I think I even have Sekiro, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, is Sekiro a PS4 exclusive? Uh, no, it's not. I yeah, think, no, they, no, it, they, no, it isn't because I have it on PC. No, it's not. yeah, I, I have it. It's on my it's on my backlog of hundreds of games that I haven't played, 
And uh, uh, Bloodborne, although I think I'm going to lob Bloodborne because of what I've seen, I don't have a PS4. And my friends who have PS4s are very into FIFA, you know, so they're not going to mm-hmm. get it. I mean, I could get it and play with them, um, or I could just wait until I get a PS5 and maybe play it then. Do you think it's going to come for PS5, Bloodborne? Oh, it, it's... It will you can play it on PS5. They just don't have like any like special update with it, like uh, no higher resolution, no 60 frames per second, none of that well, stuff. That's good but you can just still me. play it as like a PS4 game on a PS5. Yeah, that's good enough for me. So yeah, I do really enjoy the games. Uh, as far as I've been to, I enjoy the lore, I enjoy the memes, I enjoy the culture. I really like what they do. Uh, and although I play them all for a few minutes with my friends and all i have not actually beat them all so, yeah i mean i'm a i'm a bit of a fraud oh don't worry I, I i am i am too so uh so basically i've i've dabbled with the first game like years ago but i didn't quite get that far it didn't quite hook me or whatever um but what re- i think my first like legit gateway was dark souls 3 um i played that with a buddy of mine on the ps4 um, mm-hmm. And actually, we've been slowly chipping away at on PC actually the last couple months and stuff like that. And it blew me away. Like that was like, I think because it's a little, the first game is a little dated. Even the second game is a little dated, just like graphically and stuff like that, you know? Um, and Dark Souls 3, I'm like, wow, this looks really good and stuff like that. And like, I, I feel like it clicked with me more of like why people like those games. And so I got super sucked into it. I, Dark Souls 3 is like one of my favorite games ever. I'm going to say it's really, it's my favorite of the From Software, like um, Souls like games and stuff like that. Um, I played almost all of Bloodborne. I almost beat it. I got to like the second to last boss or something like that. I don't remember what happened. I, I dropped off for some reason. I love that game. It's fantastic. It's probably one of the best games ever. I just, I don't know. I, I think maybe other games came out and just got distracted. Maybe school. I don't, I really couldn't tell you. It's been a few years. Um, I might actually go back to it um my, since i have it on ps5 but also at the same time i'm like oh i want them just to do an update um of of, of bloodborne uh but uh and then i have sekiro on my pc i got through a decent chunk but then i just got stuck on a boss and like that game is like their games are known for being hard sekiro is by far the hardest one to me because it's like in Dark Souls, you know how you can just like level up and then you can just over level and then beat a boss, you know, or you can mm-hmm. use magic. And there's like there's ways to kind of get around the difficulty. Sekiro is all about skill. Like there's nothing to it except pure skill. It's all about pairing and blocking and stuff like that. I'm terrible at pairing in any video game. Any video game, it's like you need to parry. I'm like, ooh, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to survive through this. I'm just awful at like getting the timing right when they're about to strike and then you have to press the button, you know, I just like, I can't do it. I just, I can't, I can't figure it out. Um, and then I got my PS5 a few months ago. And of course the first thing I downloaded the Demon Souls remake and oh, yeah. oh my God, what a fantastic game. Blue point is, are just masterful developers of remaking that game. And, uh, I would love to see them do something original just because it was so good. I would love to see them do their own take on a soul's life because that game was it was that good. And I yeah, I loved it. Uh, so yeah, I've only beaten Dark Souls three and I've only and Demon Souls. And that's it. Um I think I played like five minutes of Dark Souls two and never really got that far in. Uh, uh um but yeah, other than that though. But I do love their games. I do think they're fantastic. It's they're because they're not the most accessible games in the world. Uh, it's a little hard to, to get through, and that's why I haven't really beaten them. Um, but Elden Ring, though, uh, dude, I'm I'm so hyped though. I'm well, so- I mean, playing Dark Souls two after playing Dark Souls three seems yeah like a really bad idea. I mean, Dark Souls three is rough. I don't know why they went on that direction with the uh, with the art and, and whatnot. And so far, what I've seen of the story, it's uh, not. I mean, it, it, you don't get the same feeling that you get with Dark Souls 1. And what I get from my friends, uh, I did play a, a, a little section of Dark Souls 3, but it wasn't in the beginning or the end. It was just in the middle on a, on a friend's gameplay. And what I get from my friends is uh, Dark Souls 3 is like Dark Souls 1. Like It makes you feel like Dark Souls 1. And I like that. But I don't want to get on to Dark Souls 3 without beating Dark Souls uh, 2. I think that's like a personal uh, sort of challenge that I have. Kind of like rounding out the whole trilogy altogether. 
Yeah, and then after Dark Souls 3, I'll jump to Bloodborne, and then I'll jump to Sekiro. And when is Elden Ring coming out? Maybe I can get them all done. January before. 22nd, I believe. January 22nd. Yeah, so like I, I should be able to get them all done. I, I will try to get them all done before. Um, 21st. I was one day off. It's okay. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's going to be my personal challenge. I'm going to star Dark Souls 1 again, beat it and then beat all of them before Elden Ring comes out. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Damn. You're okay. Well, cool. You're, you know, you're, uh, you have a good amount of time. Like the games aren't like long, you know, it's just, they're really hard. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. It's just about learning the mechanics. I hope they don't change that with Elden Ring. You know how they had this um, whole situation with, uh, what was it? An IGN writer that said that Sekiro needed an easy mode. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I hope they don't do that. I mean, I get that it's challenging and it's not that accessible for people. Like when you play Dark Souls 1 and you get the first achievement that you get for just doing the story and you see like 80% of players have this um, this achievement and then you get the next one on the story and it's like 60% of players have this achievement and then 54 and then 46 and you know and it goes down and down and, and like it tells you that not a people either play it or can play it uh and i guess it's not accessible for everyone but it's part of what makes it what it is and not everything is for everyone like yeah. i don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah i no i agree i think like like people, I think people think when they think of accessibility, they think like easy, you know, like stuff like that. It's like, it's like have accessibility options for, and that's one thing I hope for Elden Ring. I hope there's accessibility options in terms of like visual stuff or anything like that, just to help pe- players with like disabilities and such, you know, like if they have like eyesight issues or anything like that. But in terms of like easiness, no, it, it needs to be hard. Like that's the charm of it, right? You know, is yeah, is I'm the hard. difficulty is in overcoming that difficulty. And then you go, oh my God, I did it. This boss killed me 30 times, but I got them uh, eventually, you know? Hard, but fair. You just reminded me I got stuck with Arnstein um, and the other guy for two weeks. Mm. Playing daily, two weeks. And I, uh, and I did what you what you said. I mean, you just kept leveling up, leveling up. And at the end, it wasn't even about leveling up. It was just about learning the the movements or how they move and how to predict what they're going to do. And it turns out to be easy. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the art of it, at least in terms of the combat, is it's like kind of classic video game you know, design of being like, okay, here's your boss. They have these three moves you have to remember and they do it in this order and then there's the new phase they add in like two more moves and stuff like that it's very basic design but they do it so well and it kind of harkens back to those kind of classic video game designs that i feel like you don't see as much anymore like just video games have changed you know over time but i think they kind of bring some old ideas and make them fresh and it really works in terms of their game design yes the hard but fair mechanic it's um it's simplistic to a certain extent, but it makes it it, it makes for a game that you cannot uh, brute force your way through, like some other games are. Like you can, like there is a way to fix an issue or beat an enemy, but you can just and be done with it. Like the, let's say The Last of Us, like you're supposed to be stealthy, but you can also not do that. You know, like <laughs> yeah. you can brute. I mean, at least the first one. I haven't played the the second one. The second and, one, yeah, um, it's the same way. You can you can just brute force it or stealth it, whatever you want to do. Exactly. And what what Dark Souls feels um, is like every boss fight is like a puzzle. Like yeah. You have to figure it out. Like you can't. I mean, you're likely to die the first and the second and the tenth time. But you're gonna figure it out, or or either you do or you don't, right? Or you you don't get past that point. And it's frustrating, and it's uh, it makes you angry or whatever. But um, but yeah, I mean, and the first game has has its, its um issues, but yeah, I think you should really play it. It's a very good experience, and if you can play it blind, that's that's even better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I uh, another thing I hope that just because George R. R. Martin is writing it, and he did pair like we talked about, like how it's cinematic, it's like a movie. I hope that it is a little bit more of a compelling narrative because like. The Souls games and Bloodborne, uh, they all like have like they have good writing in terms of like lore and world building, but there's an actual like an actual like 
story, like you mentioned, The Last of Us, you know, something that's very story driven. It's not, it's never been like that. Sekiro is actually a little bit more like that. Actually, it, it kind of went into that direction of more of a direct narrative, and it's all, it was a little bit more compelling and a little bit more direct. Um, I hope they kind of do that a little bit with this one. I hope they can kind of like find the balance of like awesome lore and world building like the other games, but also like have something a little bit more direct, maybe a little bit more like you just feel like a little bit more attachment to characters and what's going on and understand what's going on. I think that's like one thing. It's like you're like, what is what is happening? Like I couldn't I've played through Dark Souls 3 countless times i've played through that game so many times i couldn't tell you what it was about i couldn't tell you <laughs> you know second i had a vague idea what was happening and stuff like that so i hope there's like a fine balance of like the classic miyazaki style of storytelling that's like very abstract and a little indirect but also i hope with george r, r. martin he's they're able to find like a good line of balance of like hey we're telling you this story but at the same time there's some bigger ideas that are a little bit harder to chew that you really need to digest and figure out yourself you know i hope there's like a balance of that yes yes i can attest that the first game at least is very confusing um it doesn't really tell you much you can you have to make do with what characters tell you and i think they change what they tell you depending on what stage of the game you're in uh, you know, after I played the first one, I started watching more videos on the first one, and I noticed that there were different things or different endings or different um, outcomes that you do by doing certain things at different times, and it's confusing because it, it doesn't tell you that. But again, that brings me back to what I was saying before, uh, the part of playing Dark Souls at first is going online and doing it like, a, like an effort of like a crowd effort, not just yourself. I mean, you, you go in and you ask and someone may have seen something that you didn't see or that you missed that you have seen. Maybe you, you saw something that someone didn't see. It's like the original, the OG um, Minecraft days, like when nobody knew anything and nobody knew the recipes and you had to go to forums and, hey, I found this recipe, you know, uh, because the, the information wasn't really available, not like right now with Bedrock uh, Minecraft that gives you everything. Which isn't something, and it's a good game still. But um, I think the fact that the game itself has—I mean, I don't know if ever Elden Ring will have uh, the online game and the war debating and whatnot. Hopefully, they do. Um, but that, let's say, Dark Souls One with the war debating, and then the fact that you essentially had to go to forums to figure out sort of what was going on—that made it part of it like that's part of the game experience yeah. having and to... it kind of created a community around the game too exactly i mean I, maybe it wouldn't have that much of a community if they actually explained what was going on and they didn't have the uh, online features like the fact that you can leave messages for the for the players and all that and you can troll them or you can award them like that, that's dark souls i mean that's that souls game yeah it's from software i i love like that aspect of it and i think that's what's so I think it's one of the most fascinating parts about these games is that it's so like kind of abstract and then and there's so many like hidden things that you can't quite figure out on your own you need to you know talk to other people and it really makes you like rely on the community and like brings people together and i think that's the beauty of these games like i was thinking like you know it's like someone can be like oh hey if you roll into this wall it'll disappear and there's a brand new room and there's like some you know, a new weapon in there, or there's a an interesting enemy you can kill who will then give you the X item or whatever. It's like stuff like that is incredible. Like, like playing through Demon Souls, uh, the remake. It was just like I was constantly like looking stuff up, being like, okay, so I'm in this area. There's this thing and whatnot. What's the deal with that? You know, and stuff like that, and people having the answers. And it's like, and it, like some of the, especially the, the early ones, like Dark Souls uh, One and Demon Souls, is like it took people like months to years to like dig through like all the secrets and stuff like that. You know, um, yeah. And I that was incredible. It's especially like Dark Souls One. The the world is so vast. You know, and this is going to be even bigger since it's an open world game. So I can't imagine what Elden Ring is going to be like in terms of like the secrets that are not going to be uncovered for months or even years. Like I wonder how long it's going to take till everything's uncovered because their games, they just hide things so well. And then whether it's like trying to figure out like, okay, this item description says this, what does this actually mean? Or 
hey, there's this little like hidden area that you can, if you turn this corner and then do this thing, then you uncover this new room and stuff like that. It's just like, it's incredible. And I can't imagine what Elden Ring is going to be like, because it's like, it's taking this formula that we know, but doing it in such a huge area, you know, like with an open world type game. I think it's, it's going to be nuts, dude. Yeah, I've always thought that what Dark Souls do uh, with the fact that you need to essentially play it more than once to get a full experience is like an echo of the actual gameplay, like where you keep dying and doing the same part over and over again. And you have to do that, uh, or at least originally when people hadn't uh, figured out the whole thing, they had to keep going back to the game and maybe trying different things or going a different way or using a different item or combining different stuff to it just to figure out how magic work and how the stats work. I mean, that must have taken a few hundred hours of gameplay um, collectively from the community for someone to finally figure out and make a, you know, the table of how the stats work, because you don't even know how the stats work. Like you don't even really know what you're doing with the stats. And then there's like a one throw stat, which I don't even remember what it is. Um, but um but yeah, I mean, you're essentially wasting points when you're doing that and you don't even know when you're playing it the first time. And then you're playing it the first time and you're trying to get stats on everything and that's just not the way to go. And, you know, I mean, it's, you have to do it more than once. And I think that's an echo of the actual gameplay where, you know, you are going to die and replay the same part over and over again. Yeah, it's like all, like, I feel like most games, their ideas are very separated. It's like, hey, you're leveling up and you're doing this and it's over and this is like kind of segmented over here but then you know like then fighting the bosses is segmented over here but it all feels like cohesive it's all like the ideology is all this it's all tied together you know rather than having um certain ideas kind of tethered to one aspect of the game and then another idea tethered to another part of the game it's all it's all together and i think the kind of like just like the ideas that Miyazaki has it's like incredible I think he's obviously it's the whole team from software that are super talented and incredible but like man Miyazaki though dude what a genius of just like coming up with these ideas and like kind of leading them and now uh towards these directions it's brilliant yes I totally agree I'm sorry if you can hear my dog it's howling now I don't know oh no I I don't hear Um, anything you're good yeah I know because (laughs) I was (laughs) yeah no Uh, don't worry yeah you're good and yeah, I mean, I can agree more with the um, Miyazaki um, sentiment that you have. I think it's um, great that he got into games and he got into directing and he created these games. Um, I think it's very palpable, their influence, because people, I mean, I knew about Dark Souls and I was I'm sharing the memes that were not even before playing it. And I don't believe I'm the only one. And I mean, it just keeps coming back, you know? I mean, you think the Dark Souls meme era is over and then it just keeps resurfacing here and there. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. great. And this is going to keep happening with Elden Ring. If Elden Ring becomes like a universe thing, I hope, I mean, I just hope they maintain the same level of, um, uh, I'd say, I want to say gameplay difficulty and, you know, make, make it hard and fair. And I don't know. I don't know what I feel about Martin being involved. If his deal was just the war building, then I think that's okay. If he was more into script, then I may have an issue with that uh, personally. Like a reader, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in love with Martin. I have his books here somewhere, um, and I'm still waiting for the six and the seven. I'm probably going to read them because I want the closure. But I just don't think he's the best at fantasy out there. Yeah, I I've never I've never read any of his stuff, so I'm kind of going in like with no expectations because i don't know what i would expect so i i don't know um i think it i hope at least i can feel like he like his work really meant something to the overall game i just i because i'm i'm worried that they're gonna they threw his name out there and like look we're collaborating with him but then people play it and go well it's like all the other some you know dark souls games and stuff like that where the plot isn't really a huge like in your front you know sort of thing and you just don't feel like he can there um him collaborating with the project really meant anything as a gamer you know like i hope it's really prevalent where it's like clearly him helping write 
this game and building this world actually meant something rather than it's like every other game, you know? And if it feels like every other game, that's not a bad thing at all. It's like, but it'd just be a little disappointing because you know them collaborating with him should mean something more than just, oh, here's just another Souls-like game, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's always going to be a low point when it comes to uh, developer and sagas or franchises or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but from Silver has their low point with Dark Souls 2, and I feel like that's a very solid bar to, you know, measure their games and be like, okay, let's not go further down that what Dark Souls 2 was, right? And it's yeah. not a bad game. But the reason by for itself. that though was because Miyazaki didn't work on that one, you know? Oh, he was really? yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you didn't know that? So yeah. I the reason Dark Souls 2 and it's like it's a good game, but by it's not itself, like yeah. it's not Bloodborne. It's not Dark Souls One, Dark Souls Three, mm-hmm. and like all the other games. Um, the reason it's kind of a lower point, though, is because he was working on Bloodborne actually during oh. that time, so he didn't run the uh, the show on that one. Yeah. Okay, that that makes sense. <laughs> it makes so much sense now, huh? Yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm like halfway through on that one, and, and it's a it's a good game by itself. Like it's fun, and and it, it's hard. It's harder, but fair. And it's just the same way than Dark Souls 1. I, I feel like it's a little bit harder for no reason. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, it's compared to what came, what came before, what comes next. It's Yeah, that's why it's low point. I didn't know that he wasn't involved. That makes so much sense why it would have went in the direction. <laughs> Completely changed your views on that game entirely. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that, that totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering um, why. Another thing I really I I think this is probably my last thing that I have that I have that I really I want for Elden Ring. Um, like if you because you didn't you said you didn't play Zekiro. That's correct, right? Not yet. Mm-hmm. Did you see like any of the gameplay or anything like that? A little bit. I try not to spoil myself, and I'm actually very good at it. That that's fair. That's fair. Um, like well, something with like that would was so different about that game though is the movement like it felt way more fluid like you had like a grappling hook so you can get up to mm-hmm. like different points and stuff like that and just like the movement speed it was way faster of a game and i really liked the movement of that game dark souls demon souls bloodborne they're a little sluggish um and i get why it totally works the game design and i and i and i appreciate it but at the same time, there's certain things I wish they could be tightened up a little bit, just to make it a little bit a little bit more fluid. And I hope with Elden Ring, they kind of can hit a balance of like sort of the quote unquote grounded movement of Dark Souls or Bloodborne and such, but also being a little bit more fluid, a little bit more maneuverable with Sekiro. And I know to some degree we'll get that because um the, there's gonna be mounts that we'll be able to in the gameplay trailer they showed like a guy riding yeah. like, a horse or something like that and then there's also like him jumping and stuff like that and like so it seems like there's some different new like movement um abilities and stuff like that or you know tools at your disposal like mounts and such stuff like that so i just i hope it's a little it's a little bit more than what um, the Dark Souls games were. And not just because it's an open world game where you need to traverse from, you know, large spaces. But I mean, just like in terms of just purely you're in a small area and, you, and the way you're moving around, the way you're getting from point A to point B, or the way you're fighting people, like the way you're moving around your enemies and stuff like that. I just hope they kind of do something a little bit different um, that's maybe a little bit more in this the vein of Sekiro, but maybe still harkens back to like Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Well, I mean, based on the trailer, it does look more fluid than Dark Souls is or was. I just hope, I mean, they have to find a, um, a balance between keeping it as a, as a From Software game or a Souls game, Souls-like, whatever. Um, well, it wouldn't be a Souls-like because it's From Software. But, um, but keeping the actual experience of playing a From Software game, with bringing it to, I guess, current day and age. Because, I mean, Dark Souls, you said it, it's dated. I mean, it's good for its time, but it does feel like a 2011 game, 2012 or whatever. And, I mean, they can't just repl- replicate the same gameplay, that's for sure, because people are going to notice and they're not probably going to like that. That's fine. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think that's it's just going to be a, a, um, a matter of, finding a balance between the new or the current day game uh, expectation, you may call it, and um, keeping it as a from software at its core. Yeah, yeah. I 
yeah, it's it's all about balance. I think that's the the moral of the story is like they just they can strike a balance between new and old. And I think so far they've done a great job with that. You know, it's like like Bloodborne. So much of Bloodborne is just straight from Dark Souls, except they just dressed it differently. But it worked, and it still felt fresh and new with like the way the guns worked is like to kind of parry and like do all these different things and whatnot, and it really worked. And then Sekiro being totally different completely that was probably the the biggest you know them diverging from their path as much as they have but at the same time you play it and go this is totally from software oh my god this is totally this totally works you know and that game ended up winning a game of the year award and stuff like that which is really shows like that they're they're constantly like being like having the same formula but able to innovate on it and like very few studios are able to do that there's very few studios in general that have like a a very specific style that they go for and they just hone in on that. And I think that's, what's awesome about from software. And I think Elden Ring has a lot of potential to do that. And I think it also, cause it's going to have heavy emphasis on co-op. I think you can play up to four people in a group. And oh. I think it's going to really kind of open the door. Cause I think the most, the best way to play dark souls, if it's, if the difficulty is not, your thing i think it's a great way to play it co-op um that's how i've beat dark souls 3 is i played it through co-op and i think and i almost beat dark uh, bloodborne on co-op too and i think i think it could be a really like accessible game without well still keeping the hardcoreness of it you know the difficulty um and the abstractness of it is the co-op on dark souls 3 like uh, limited to a uh, 10 levels up or down like it is on... no so the way um, Dark Souls 3, I think it works for all the Dark Souls games. It's basically you can summon uh, one to two friends, and then mm -hmm. there's an item where you can actually, I can't remember the name of the item, but there's an item where you can, if you use that, you can get an extra person. So dark, in Dark Souls, you can get up to four people, but when you use that item, your chances of getting invaded increase too. Um, I don't know if invasions are going to be a thing in Elden Ring. Um, uh, they haven't confirmed that or not, but um, but they definitely have confirmed it's going to be a heavy emphasis on co-op, and that's why the way I like to play those games. The only one I ever played solo was Demons, the Demon Souls remake, but the rest of them I've played through co-op, well, except for Sekiro because Sekiro doesn't have any online whatsoever. But uh, but I think that I think that's going to be a super cool thing though to be able to that's, do. Yeah, I know that's I don't think that's how it worked with Dark Souls 1 at all. Uh, I think you could only summon one person or you could only get invaded but one. If I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong here, but I only ever summoned one friend and you were limited to 10 levels. Like if you were at level 25, your friend had to be either 15 or 35 tops. Oh, interesting. You okay. You couldn't go over that line. Uh, and they would, and you could only summon them on a specific uh, boss sections. Well, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's limited to the boss section, but we would use it like that. Uh, you, you would go and and put on your mark in, in front of the boss gate, and they would summon you, and then you go and help them. But yeah, it was very limiting because of the 10 level uh, rule. And we had to go uh, through it and essentially not level up for a while. We wanted to team up. And um, that, that's very risky because you can lose your souls. Have yeah. you ever played, um, what's it called, Neo? Yo, Neo, I, I haven't, but I, I hear tremendous things about it. Yeah, it looks, um, I played it also once with, with my friends and it's, Kinda like Dark Souls too. Uh, well, yeah, Dark I hear Souls it's pretty much like a Souls-like. Um, yeah. Yeah, and but it's also <laughs> kind of like over these games like uh, that would put you against uh, like a horde of enemies when you just go through them like butter. Um, I'm thinking about it in like Orochi Warriors and all those uh, kind of kind of games. I don't know if you ever played Warriors Orochi. Um, but it's also sort of like that. They describe it as a muscle core action RPG. Mm. It's a, yeah. And I also wanted to play that one. I don't know why I haven't gotten around to it. Um, but yeah, I'm also hoping for that one. Yeah, I've heard of like of like the Souls like type games. Of like, and you want to go outside of what From Software has done. Like mm -hmm. Neo is like considered like the next like best sets out there. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah, I've never really gotten into it. Um, I couldn't, I don't think I've ever really played like any Souls likes that were outside of From Software, actually. So I haven't played Neo, I, have. I haven't played like anything else that's out there and stuff like that. I have, I played uh, Lords of the Fallen. 
Oh, what's that one? Lord of the Fallen is essentially like they the souls like <laughs> like they they actually they didn't try to take some elements of the of, of Dark Souls. They tried to essentially copy it. Oh, I, and... I've seen the. I, I looked it up and I see like the box art of the game, and I've seen the box art like on the yeah. PlayStation Store and such. Okay. Yeah, I played that one, and I mean it's okay. <laughs> boss fights are kind of lame, though. I mean, there's like two different types of bosses, and, and that's it. And it's not uh, extremely challenging, uh, but it's it's okay. I mean, it, it's the closest thing that you that you're gonna see as a dark to a Dark Souls game, but because they are essentially ripping it off. Mm. Like interesting yeah I, I, I looked it up and i saw i got like not bad reviews but like sixes and sevens you know like it was like oh it was, it was all right you know um yeah it's not the worst thing you're gonna find yeah but hey i'm i, I need to check out neo though like that's something i need to do especially since i like this this style of games and i've heard such great things about it so oh uh, this one and it has online co-op Ooh. okay all right all right louise i'm you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on my wish list on uh, Steam. So when either it goes on sale or maybe I just simply don't have any games to play and I want to get into it because I have quite a few things on my backlog right now. I'm, I'll am i put it on. I'll put it on there because of you. All right. Me too. Uh, <laughs> um, so any last thoughts, though, on, on what you hope for what, for what you want in Elden Ring? Uh, no, I think everything's been said and done here. Um, just going back to our first news piece, I hope... I think I would rather have a Dark Souls, I'm sorry, um, Dead Space 4 than um, than a remake. Like, I think mm. I, the, the story needs to finish because I didn't play Dead Space 3, but they'll tell me that the story is unfinished. Like, they left it on a... Cool. Well, hey, let's get a dead a new Dead Space that's really good. And then let's just get... I just hope Elden Ring just has no more delays. That's my, that's my last hope for Elden Ring is no delay. Let's just get it on January 21st. Please. I want... Oh, God. I've... The easily my most hyped up game I'm looking forward to. You know how yes. hyped I get about games. I know you're you try and stay away so you don't get your hopes up, but me, I can't help it. I get too excited and uh, yeah, I'm you just jinx it. You know that. Yeah, I do have a, I do have the the curse set uh, keen game. Right, anytime I'm excited about a game, the game gets delayed. So uh, so hey, yep. if Elden Ring gets delayed, you can yell at me, at Luis. All right, it's totally okay, and yes, I'm sure, sure I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> all right then. Uh, cool. Hey, Luis, thank you so much for talking to me today. And uh, for our listeners, thank you for listening. And you can check us out on the King Gamer podcast on podcast services and on YouTube, youtube.com slash King Gamer. We'll talk to you later. See ya.